Okay, so let's assume this teeny weeny grain of sand, just about 0.1 inches in diameter, is our home planet Earth. Trust me, we're not even that big on a cosmic scale, so I'm flattering us a lot. You'll see. Anyway, the moon will be just about here, a little over 2 inches away, and we'll have to find a grain of sand that's 3 times smaller than the first one. It's hard to say if this is the one, so let's again assume it is. Now, what's the closest neighbor to Earth apart from the Moon? That's right, Venus. It's called our sister planet because it's roughly the same size and mass. So this here grain of sand is going to be it. As for the distance, we'll have to take a little walk now. And there we go, over 20 feet away from the grain that is the Earth. And that's at its closest, mind you. Next comes Mercury, and it's more than twice as small as the Earth. So let's take a grain of salt this time for variety. How far do you think it is from its neighbor, Venus? <laughs> Not even close. It's here, almost 26 feet away. If you've ever seen a London double-decker bus, it's just short of that vehicle's length. Okay, Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, so naturally, here goes. The big and mighty star, measuring as huge as this rock. It's roughly 8 inches in diameter. So, it fits. Now, where should I place it? Well, you'd better take another double-decker, and then some, because the Sun's distance from Mercury is 30 feet, even further than Venus. And a walk from here to Earth is quite a trip already. All in all, the distance is just short of that between two baseball bases. Cool, huh? But we've only just begun. Moving away from the Sun, Next comes Mars, which is twice as small as the Earth. Let it be a red pepper grain this time. The distance to it, though, is even greater than from Mercury to the Sun, over 33 feet. So we'll place it here. And now, prepare for the real thing. We're crossing the asteroid belt to reach Jupiter. To do that, we'll need to travel about 275 feet. That's almost the height of the Statue of Liberty. And the planet itself is about the size of this grape, just shy of one inch. Now, let's take a smaller grape and fly another 330 feet. That's how far Saturn is from Jupiter. Can you still see our rock? I mean, sun from here? I don't think I can. Now, if you take the Golden Gate Bridge in California and decide to rise from its lowest to highest point, that would be the distance from Saturn to Uranus the seventh planet in the solar system. Notice how distances grow larger every time? That's far from over, though. Meet Neptune, Uranus's brother planet. Although they're neighbors, it'll take us another 820 feet to get to it. Put five Olympic-sized pools in a line, and you'll get the scale. The former planet 9, Pluto, is our next destination. If we go straight from the sun, it'll be yet another four Olympic pools away and the size of it is only a speck of ground pepper. Pluto is six times smaller than the Earth. And now comes the barely imaginable. Let's first go back to our Sun and start the journey from there. Remember how far that is? Right, more than a half a mile away now. To get to the inner boundary of the solar system from this point, we'll have to travel around the whole planet four times. Yep, we're still on the scale where the Sun is just an eight-inch rock. And when it's done, we'll find ourselves in a humongous belt of floating chunks of ice, the Oort Cloud. The width of this belt is way beyond our planet's limits, but we'll try. Let's take three rocks of the same size as our Sun here and lay them in a line. And now, imagine each of these rocks is the size of the real Sun. That's the width of the Oort Cloud for you, which goes in a circle around the whole solar system. If we put it to our initial scale, the Sun won't be even visible, no bigger than an atom. So let's scrap it now and start over, shall we? Okay, now this ring of stones contains within it the unfathomable volume of space. Its radius is roughly one light year, or 0.4 inches now. And that would be our ground zero for all the following discoveries. The closest star system from here is Alpha Centauri, and it will be about 1.5 inches away. It consists of three stars and at least one planet that could be inhabitable. The system is too small to see on this scale, but we'll pretend this grain of sand is adequate 
and proceed further. Next, we go to the edge of the Milky Way galaxy, our home. The galaxy itself is about 100,000 light years across, but we're not far from its very center, so the journey will only take us 50,000 light years. On the super shrunken scale we've created here, it will be 1,650 feet. If you lay down the CN Tower in Toronto, it'll only be a few dozen feet longer. From here, the nearest galaxy to us is the Andromeda. In some distant future, it'll collide with the Milky Way. But right now, to get there, we'll need to travel nearly 15 miles. That's 2.5 million light years in normal count. If you're interested, it's also 2.5 depths of the deepest point in the Mariana Trench, known as the Challenger Deep. Next up is an object we could finally place on a larger scale. NGC 604, a star nebula located in the Triangulum Galaxy. If it were in a single line, we'd only need to travel 1.2 miles from where we are now. So let's do it. And the nebula itself is about 1,500 light years in diameter, which is equivalent to 50 feet. That's like a five-story building. But let's get back about half a mile and look at something else. This object is almost exactly the size of a Boeing 747. And surprisingly, it's a galaxy. A dwarf galaxy, to be precise. Messier 32 is 6,500 light years across and is a satellite to the Andromeda galaxy. They move together, Messier being tugged along by the gravity of its big sister. And now, I'm going to take you for a ride of your life. Get ready, we're going into distances and sizes that would seem impossible if they weren't true. Let's first get back to the circle of rocks that is our solar system. Moving up and away from our star system, we can see the Milky Way galaxy, spanning 0.6 miles wide. Shooting upward still, we see the great emptiness around the galaxy that we've already crossed today, 15 miles of nothingness. Then, we see the galaxies and dwarf galaxies surrounding ours. First, the Andromeda, then others, until we're high enough to see the whole local group. It's a galactic cluster in which the Milky Way is no more than 1%. The diameter is 62 miles. But higher still we rise, and now we're looking at a bright and shiny Lania Kea supercluster, which is home to the local group. From here, our galaxy isn't even visible. The diameter of the supercluster is about 3,200 miles. It's more than the distance from Los Angeles to New York. And even that's not all. Higher and higher until we see the boss Great Wall. It's a supercluster located unimaginably far from us, and on our current scale, its diameter is about 6,200 miles. That's longer than the Great Wall of China, with all of its branches. No wonder it's the boss. And finally, we're up in outer space now. Even though the model of our whole galaxy stayed so far below, you can't see it without a telescope. And we're now looking at the largest object in the observable universe the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. On the current scale, it's as far as 62,100 miles away from Earth, or a quarter of the distance to the Moon. And its diameter is the same, so it takes up another quarter of the way. There are trillions upon trillions of galaxies, nebulas, and stars, and nearly infinite possibilities out there. And yet, the universe is always expanding, so it's also only the beginning.